for you. This meeting is being Got it? Yes. All right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Well, first, let me just say what an honor it is to have you here at this. Yeah, right. uh, I'm flat, flattered. I, I flattered. <laughs> um, yes, a lot of. So I was thinking, do you realize Temple of the Jedi Order is just what? It was when we're going to be uh, 18 years old in just a few months. Yes, sir. Almost 18. Yeah. Gosh. It Ooh. seems like this yesterday, oh, right? Vote. Well, kind of. I mean, it. it's amazing how, you know, just how the time creeps up. I mean, I've had a lot of changes since then, mainly with so many close relatives dying during that time and Things are really, you know, really different now. But you know, other than that, we we'll keep on going. Um, I tell you what, I, I'll answer a question for, before I let y'all ask. A lot of people, they're you're probably saying, "Well, we just never see you around. You don't do anything, da, 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 and all that." Okay, here's the thing. What what I do is my job at this point is to, because I have a paralegal degree, I make sure that we stay legal and stay a legal public charity and I do our little paperwork. I keep track of the treasury uh, and pay the bills. Um, and I personally, nowadays, for the past couple of years, uh, you have to send an email to get an account and I send a little questionnaire and we've weeded out a lot of people. Like, if they can't be bothered to answer these few questions, they're not going to do anything anyway. And so we have had very, very few, uh, maybe one spam account snuck in in two years and very few uh, people that are just trying to, you know, come in and, and act foolish. But the whole point from the beginning because I was uh, already um, 45 when this began. And my intention was to get it really started, established, and let the new people that came in and came up to be knights through the um, process, you know, other than by virtue of, of being a founder, you just... You know, you automatically uh, let them mostly run it, and I try to stay out of it. I mean, like, I'll give a legal opinion, and, you know, I do vote on the council if it's a major policy thing, and I think, you know, that it's good or bad, I would give my opinion. But it's really, it is absolutely the council that uh, that uh, runs, uh, that runs, uh, everything. I mean, in other words, I, I don't. And so I, I very much keep up with what is going on. Uh, I'm not in discard a lot because I just really like the farm. I like the permanence of it. I like how you can have a long, drawn out, in-depth discussion, you know, whether you happen to be online then or not, and then it's preserved for the record. And discard is a is a wonderful servant. And it's a horrible master, and um, I'm sure there's a lot of great ideas that have come up in it that just scroll away and they're yeah they're lost. And so there, I pretty much there's my little speech. So I'm ready to answer uh, any questions anybody has if I can. It, it, would would everyone permit me to go first? There, I would really like to ask you, John, a question. Okay. It's been some time now that we've worked together in council, and there have been a lot of changes in the way that you know the temple is presented. Um, I would even say that you know, although we never changed the mission of the temple, its mission has 
evolved and changed over time. Um, I'm just curious as to whether or not you're satisfied with what we've done with it, and if not, how we can do better. I think it's, I think that it is evolving and coming along. And some things are going to work out good. And some we're going to say, hmm, that might not be as good an idea as we thought, but we tried. No big deal. And, you know, I mean, as long as nobody's getting hurt. And and we move on. And um, um, see, I like having a big council. Uh, that I don't think that that is not an impediment to anything. To anything, it actually is a help. I mean, like um, um, I would think, like if there's people willing and able, because God knows it. I mean, it takes. I mean, it takes time and effort. Um, uh, that that I think it would not hurt that if the people that have the time and energy uh, that we could add a few more people and I'd be okay with that. And I'd very, very much like to see the, the Knights as a group um, more uh, involved in, in uh, you know, making recommendations that, that then the council, we would take those recommendations very seriously you know i mean if 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 like a majority of the active knights are saying you know this really this this really that then they probably are on to something you know is is the way that i would look at it and and my thought i'm well aware and i have uh, gone out of my way to avoid uh founder syndrome where just because somebody started something they just can't bear to lose their baby, you know, and all that. And um, my the only privilege that I put into the Articles of Incorporation is that as long as I uh, live, uh, I mean, unless under good behavior, now if I committed a crime like stole money from the order yeah i could be legally you know kicked out but otherwise the only privilege i have is that i'm on the council for life but i'm still just one vote so and what do we have we have 10 people on there right now nine or ten yeah so here's the thing though john it's like i don't understand why you would even try to avoid found descending i mean oh. if we're going to talk if we're going to talk liberally about what goes on in council, well, then we may as well admit that there is not, we are not egalitarian in council. There is, <laughs> you know, there are some elements of the council which carry a certain weight over even other elements of the council. I don't think that's something for you to be ashamed of. You know, well, there, no. there are certain benefits to, uh, to a social order which resembles more a monarchy than you know the you know the travesty of, of trying to pretend to be a democracy so <laughs> well no we're de no we're definitely not a democracy that would be uh, I mean if if we turned if we said okay every member gets to vote on everything we we'd have <laughs> the biggest pile of, <laughs> of of crap so quick I mean it would just be be, be desolation. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like. That. I mean, in other words, uh, the, well, I would say once somebody has become a knight, yeah, they definitely. I would, you know, am going to consider them very seriously. But up up to that point, um, some apprentices that are really advanced but just haven't quite gotten it yet. But yeah, I mean, it's somebody. In other words, they have to be. They have to be well versed in what we're doing, what what's going on, how things work, um, you know, to make a reasonable decision, you know, on anything. I know some in some years past when people could just automatically sign up, somebody got a bee in their bonnet over something, 
and they were having some protest and everybody was changing their um uh their um avatar blank white and like was, <laughs> John you like, started that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, somebody who's <laughs> no, it's true. You started that. Who did? Not me. <laughs> I would never change to black, but anyway. <laughs> anyway I, I, it was. I so, about that thing with TZB back in 2017. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing was, we had. All these uh, clueless people, and some of them, I'm sure, were just were just kids that had actually joined that day or the day before. They were going, "Yeah, protest, take down the the council, and all this stuff." And it's like this is stupid. You, you you've been here not even a day, and you pretend like you know what's what's going on. So no, of it's course, the same time, John. I, we can we can part in that a whole lot more easily. Part in somebody who's been here for six years and who's over 30 years old. I mean, you know, someone who's 19 years old and influenceable is like they're having fun on the internet. We get it. You know, yeah. someone who's been a part of us for six years and decides to throw us under a bus for stupidity. No, that's something that we, I mean, that's even more deplorable than the 19 year old who arrived the, the same day. You know, you know, I, you know <laughs> well, you know, what I respect is if somebody really does have a strong position um, and they say, look, this is wrong, then the way to do that is you stay as a knight and you advocate and you say, this is wrong and I'm, you know, work to, to get people to see why you think that it's wrong and change their minds and do it through discussion and reason or, I don't know, cinema. Much I've been trying to do for the last five years. Yeah, the case, you know. but but that's what what I respect. People that just say, "Oh, I just just gonna rage, leave, and protest." Okay, now you're gone, and you you are influencing absolutely nothing. You're just gone, you know. And um, but um, I mean, seems like unless I've missed something, seems like things have been pretty smooth for a while. I don't, you know, nobody in particular having a, you know, a major issue. Uh, I think one actually, of the... Actually, we've, we've, we've got Carlos and Roz to thank a lot for that. Yes. Uh, not to mention the work that Zach does, you know, moderating Discord. Yes. Yeah, well, that's what I was just going to say. Zero is a, a huge help with uh, moderating yeah. and making sure uh, that people, yeah. like, you know, and, follow and, the expectations and, and really you know he's, I've always said you know these damn companies um, everything from Disney to health company you know that, that you have this president who gets these these outrageous salaries and they really they don't do anything and actually if they're doing a good job they really don't have much to do because the point is they're making they're saying hey are are these officers well placed and they're doing their job? And if they're not, like if we need more help in a certain thing, let's elevate somebody and give them the power to you know to do the the job. So yes, I'm delighted. You know, we have several you know people that are extremely trusted and have admin access. I mean, if they wanted to be evil, they could go in and 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 nuke nuke the site. I mean, at least up to the last backup because uh, what uh, basically my habit um, I back up the database of the site almost every single day and then I do a, a full backup of the site, which does take a little while. I, I try to do that once a week. So we're never far behind. Probably you know, I mean, the, there's the structure and then there's the data in it. And um, uh, right now, like, a, if you're curious, a, a full meal deal backup that you could take by itself and bring the whole thing back up 
is about 10.1 gigabytes. And um, Ren, Ren has really streamlined some things. I know we're not fully perfect on the new site yet, and it it is well known and it's being worked on. I mean, uh, the thing is, I mean, he has, uh, he has I'll, I'll get, if I'm getting this, I mean, I know he has a full time job. And he works a lot, and what he has a wife and what two or three concubines, and I mean he's busy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's busy. So, uh, yeah, so this the guy with nine kids. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> I thought he had two. No, Ren, yes, but now I'm talking about Carlos. Oh, <laughs> ten. It's ten here, and yeah, that's busy. And like, I'm, I know he can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would uh, of course it has, it has been hotter than hell we I mean for the past two weeks I think only one day we didn't have a heat advisory warning I mean it just goes above 100 degrees every single day I know there's places where it's worse but my god oh, and we're, we're a human part of life. like I'm an hour I am an hour away from the Gulf of Mexico. I'm um, 45 minutes away from Louisiana, way down in the southeast corner and uh, on the Trinity River. So it's an interesting place. Very old city. I mean, that Beaumont, Beaumont existed before the Civil War. So... Um, it's my hope. I, I hope to be able to host something here to where I can get to meet people. It's, it is difficult for me to travel because of medical issues. Um, and, um, <laughs> you know, I, I won't get into all that, but, um, Hopefully, I'll do something, and hopefully, I will be able to work out maybe renting a little building and actually having a real church here. Even uh, even if only a few people come, it would actually be a church church. I mean, I have a service every every Sunday, and uh, we'd make it fun. I I really. I, I, what I love to look at, the early Christians really did this stuff right. They didn't have churches. You know what they did? They took turns. The, all the, mem the members of the community, they said, well, this week it's your house. This week it's your house. Mm -hmm. And they would have their service and prayers. Um, the uh, uh, the history of this, there, there's a lot of stuff that is well known, and and um, uh, you know, Catholic Church has been around a long time, and they they kind of try to bury some of this this stuff. But in the very early church, women held very important positions. They would lead services. We know for a fact that there were ordained deaconesses or deacons, I guess, really, we don't usually. Well, John, yeah. you're getting ahead of yourself there because at that time there wasn't really any organization to call it or ordain. Well, it wasn't really an ordinance. It was just, you know, they were taking what, turns having services. And the thing of it is that's most remarkable in those days, it was not Christ, Christ, Christ. It was... Right. Okay, the Christ has said this, and they were focused on what he taught rather right. than on his right. person. You know, that was before he actually became a god. You know, this right. you know, he was he yeah, was a they, teacher. Yeah. They truly considered him. They certainly did not he was the son of man and not the son of God. Yeah. The universe. Hell no, they didn't think, think that. No, they thought yeah, he was the son of man. That the, was that. Yeah. The son of man, a, a very enlightened uh, person. I, I really like the gospel of, of Thomas. And so, like, you know, I'd say, yes. you know, like, yes. now, now, yes. I, I, Sorry, I just want to, I just want to stop. Uh, Carlos has his hand up, just so you're aware. 
okay. Uh, you see on this uh, see little phone, I can't see everybody at once. I have to scroll. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, brother John. Hey. <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, I, have, I have a question. Now that I got you here, I got you. I, I got you. I want. I want to hear it from got myself. You. Okay. Okay. How how do we use the name Jedi? Have we been sued? How do we, I don't want to say get away with it, but how is it that we are possible after 18 years to be able to use it? We have never been sued. We have never got a letter. If they were foolish enough to sue us, oh my Lord, the publicity, we'd be overwhelmed with members because it would be all over the international news. And here's the thing about it they would lose because there would be too many organizations like um, the, uh, what do you call it? The one that's um, for separation of church and state and stuff like that. Lucas's trademark is on fictional characters called Jedi, but we're not fictional. We are real Jedi. He doesn't have a trademark on that. See, when you apply for a trademark on a word, it can't be for everything in the entire world. You have to give specific reasons. So if you go and look up the trademarks, it talks about Jedi uh, as used in fictional characters, in uh, books and stories and movies and animations and toys and things like that. But it's fiction, fiction, fiction. We're not fictional Jedi. We are real Jedi. There's no trademark on that. Matter of fact, when uh, he who shall not be named, Daniel Jones, when that, uh, <laughs> when that <clears throat> gentleman tried to trademark Jediism, they, they slapped him down so hard. They said, no, you, you, they said, they said, I mean, in effect, it was like, huh, why don't you just go ahead while you're at it? Trademark Christianity. Sorry, that's gone into public domain. So, no, we have never even received a letter. We are absolutely legal. We are legitimate. Thank you. Our symbol is our valid trademark. I haven't registered it because it would cost $800. And there's no need to register it. If someone else tried to use it or they tried to register it, we have so much historical proof of how long we've been using that. Yeah. yeah. That they could never, never, never hope, hope, hope to win. And nobody's ever tried to do that either. I, I had one little tiny group that they were under the frivolous notion that if they just kind of changed it a tiny bit they could use it but I just told them that's not true and I showed them the law and I said you know please take that down and make up your own symbol and they said oh, okay well we're sorry it was was no further problem so uh, we're, we're good we're legal thank you brother John oh you're welcome do you want us to try the UK Charity Commission again? Um, I am determined to try that again. And we are going to do it. We're going to do it different over there. We're, 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 we're well, 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 well uh, the, I would what, suggest that we do not. I would suggest that we do it exactly the same way we did it before. Right. But, yeah. But, okay. We're going to have, in other words, we're going to have this website where people can join as members. And we're going to make a second website where anybody can log into it and read it. And they'll have to be moderators because anybody be able to post. And it's going to okay. end at like an ARG UK. And it's going to specifically be for the benefit of the general public, whether they're a member or whether they're not. See, that was their big thing. They said that we mainly benefited our members, not the general public. 
So, in other words, they gave us an outline of exactly what to change to make it work over there. But listen, you you ought to read all the law articles that said it was a bad, bad decision, and you could tell that desperately trying to find a way to not do it just because it said Jedi that, that they just were finding pulling every excuse out of the air. They said, well, they said if you they said Jedi is no more um no more um uh, what do you call it um uh, you know what do you call it cloud like or incoherent. They said I mean you know you start digging into Buddhism or Taoism, you know? And it's like, I mean, it's like if Buddhism is a religion, well, why isn't Jediism? I mean, I mean, it just, it, I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of our stuff is elements of, of certainly Zen, certainly Taoism, um, certainly the belief that that people can be redeemed, uh, uh, certainly. Hopefully, an awareness that that we really are all. We come from the force. We go to the force. You know, we've never left it. You know, we emerge when conditions are right, and we withdraw when they're not. And of course, there's a big difference between eternal. And infinity, and as big as infinity is, it is dwarfed by the eternal, which is beyond the realm of time. You know, um, I always think everybody in the right conditions around the right people really need to do a good hard dose of psilocybin mushrooms. Hadn't done any in decades, <laughs> but, but but the experience that I had was was good, and it changed my life. I thought I was the Jesus doors of the but doors of perception after that wore off. It really absolutely let get let me. It broke open these barriers, and I, and I was able to just see things so much more clearly. You know, without you know, trying to complicate things to, you know, it's, it, it's pretty simple, but yeah, under, under the right conditions, not frivolously, but yeah, there's a lot of things that, that are, been, they're discovering that in therapy. I mean, I know um, there's a international group and um, there's in some places that they're studying the effects. They have found that people with terminal cancer, that they give them a medical dose of uh, of psilocybin, for instance, and they have a good, good therapist sit with them and have an afternoon of therapy. And uh, the majority of the people, they lose their fear. They they concentrate on having the best time they have they have left, and it's it's just it's just a godsend, you know, or something like that. I, I could get into into stuff all day, I guess. I, I mean, but. Uh, uh, Does anybody have questions for Brother John while he's here? Really, I mean. Get him while he's hot. But yeah, if you. It's more often. You know, if, you, if, you know, if you think of something later, you you know, or you just want to ask you here, you're certainly welcome to, to, to send me a, a, a PM. Uh, or, or I'll tell you how to get my attention. Use that uh, account sign up at registration at Temple of the Jedi Order, because I, I, that's like my job. I, I check that thing at least at least twice a day. I mean, I every nobody waits more than twenty four hours to get their application, and when they answer, by God, they get their account made within 24 hours too. So, I, you know, I do work. It does take a little bit of time. But... Now you know where John hangs out. Now, now you know, you know where, where, I, I, where I'm I was going to ask a question. Oh, sorry. Go. 
I was going to ask, what are, what do you think is the future for the Temple of the Jedi Order? Hmm. I don't know. But I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to have surprises for everybody. And I think that as, as we are gaining more and more people that, that can be totally trusted, I mean, with the full, you know, to do all, anything on the, the site. And then we've got, you know, some excellent moderators and excellent people. Uh, uh, I, I tell you, the only thing that, that weighs heavy on my mind is, and I don't know how many we have, but but initiates that are that are waiting for a teacher and have not been able to get one. Now, some of those initiates might not want one right now, and I don't know. I haven't gone and asked them, but I would really, really hope. I mean, the thing is, uh, uh, I could now I could teach them Zen all day. I mean, I'm really a Zen teacher. But I don't know. I I don't. I'm not a very good Jedi teacher. I mean, I, I just you know I don't know how to describe. It. I just feel there's people that do it so much better than me. You know, if, you know if they want me to teach them some, you know, we can get into the to the Zen, which I think is really important. Um, and I don't even I don't even mean religious Zen. I mean just the the actual practice of Zen where you're not fooled. You don't confuse ideas of things with things. That's why I know some of the reading we used to have was kind of difficult, like uh, the book on the taboo of knowing who you are. I know it had some dated uh, language and stuff in it. But um, for me, it really snapped me out of some some stuff. I said, oh my God, you know, I see this now. You know, once you see it, you know, you can't uh, unsee it. And um, everybody could use a dose of Zen. I, I think it, sa it saved my saved my life uh, for on a bunch of counts. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't mean you need to ring ring bells and do the little, but, yeah. but I mean, the sec, just understanding the secular sin, uh, I think is very valuable. So I, I think, I feel we're heading in a good direction and some stuff's going to work, some's not. And we just realize that, that, you know, we're young, we're not quite 18. We can't even vote yet. <laughs> I mean, if we were yeah. a person. So, but, but, we're, we're certainly get we're, we're really getting there, and the fact that we that we've lasted so long, I mean, uh, uh, that uh, let's see, I I've lost count. Oh, if anybody's curious, way back in two thousand five, how I really found out about Jediism, and what inspired me to say, hey. Because back then it was a real art. Oh, it's religion. No, it's not a religion. Yeah, it is. I said, well, now look, if the, if the if the Westboro Baptist Church is a recognized religion, and they are, I said, you're going to tell me Jediism, which for good is not. Well, that's just a pile of crap. I mean, I and I said, okay, I'm going to show you it's going to be a recognized religion, and certainly in the United States, it most definitely is. And we have the we five hundred one c three, and um, um, damn, I'm losing my train of thought. But oh, the, what inspired me back then? It was called the Jedi Sanctuary, and it was a really nice site. And they had a lot of the ideas that I adopted for us. I said, "Oh, this is really good." And I and the only thing they were doing that uh, that I thought well because they didn't know better I don't even, they were sending people over to the Universal Life Church to get ordained 
And I said, now that's just silly. You, in other words, you're saying you're a church, but you're too timid to ordain your own min ministers. They didn't realize they could legally ordain their own ministers. And, um, uh, but I'm giving credit where credit is due. I don't know how much of that is accessible on the Wayback Machine, but that's very important. I, whoever those people were, I owe them uh, that that was how I first saw it and got into the debate. Um, said, you know what? I can't, it was on November 23rd, 2005. I was just sitting here thinking and and the name, you know, popped up as Temple of Jedi Order. I said, hmm. and it was available. I said, wow. Uh, I called my friend and um, he made the first site. Unfortunately, that site is gone. He um uh, he spent some time in prison for for DWIs, and I I had access to all his business and stuff, but uh, it was with GoDaddy, and they made some changes, and I wasn't aware of it because I wasn't you know fooling with that, and the uh, site got erased, and it's it's just gone, and that's a shame because. The first year of our existence was on that site, but uh, it's just the way it is. I mean, which years are we talking about, uh, John? Uh, well, we were talking about that. They remember they remember they split off the Temple of the Jedi Force. Yes, way back. And when I was after we had been around for a first year, we just had we basically had kind of a half and half. There was. For some reason, we, we it was like a civil war. I mean, it was like, I'm not even sure what the issues were. It was just people that that were determined that there was my way or no way. And uh, I'm really aware of that after 2008. So. Fractured. Uh, yeah, this was like in 2007, actually. Um, at the very end of, very end of 2006, and going into early 2007. And I said, look, I said, y'all, but group of people believe this and the legal counsel, which was just three then, I said, but this counsel, me and these other two people, we have the final say. I mean, that's it's legal. That's the way it is. I said, but guess what? Go start your own order. I mean, there's enough for you to do it, you know, quit arguing, you know. So anyway, it, you know, it fractured and um, the the domain got illegally snatched. I went and I sued to get it back. And then one, then one of the people who was also a police officer, he checked with a lawyer and he said, you really did steal the name. It doesn't belong to you. And he gave it back to me real quick. And then we got our site set up which you can go all the way back to 2007 on if you dig dig deep in the in the forum so there's a good lot of history there and uh, you know am I missing anybody I'm trying to look up and down this oh there's potato does um, anyone else have any questions yeah somebody nothing you want to know secrets someone, are there any books you'd recommend oh my god so many you know you know something i let me let me make a, a post about that like a recommended a, a reading mm -hmm things that I've found particularly helpful or particularly yes, uh, I sure will I, I will be happy to do to do that yeah thank you and, um, I will sure do that yeah. thank you oh you're welcome my goodness 
So what do I need to talk about now? Ready when you are, Sergeant Pembroke. Uh, <laughs> now I just finished rewatching Silence of the Lambs. Uh, God, that's a good movie. <laughs> I think I, I think I'll go next to Rosemary's Rosemary's Baby. Uh, if, if if anybody has never seen the movie Rosemary's Baby, yeah. you really, you are really missing. It is a very good one. Nineteen sixty eight, um, right? Standing, but yes, yeah. standing movie, and. Uh, if you hadn't read the book, you know you're going to be saying, "Well, she's just, you know, or is she?" You know, and you and you you, you know, it's like, "Well, yeah, well, not yeah." And uh, it I really directed that really gets nervous. You know, you might want to have a beer and a Valium with it. You know, if you get nervous easy, but yeah, but that's what's weird. I mean, they they did it with the the, the methods of 1968, so. I mean, yeah, you expect you know really wild special effects. You've got, but it is still a no story, right? The, the film, it, it's it's flippant. I mean, it's really like I don't think you really get shivers of terror watching it. I mean, it's there's any special effects in it, Alex. I, that was that I, was I, Roman Polanski, a dream, and they do some fade ins and out. Sean. It was on the tip of my tongue, and I was like, oh, I can't remember who directed it. But yeah, Roman Polanski. Oh, yeah, Roman Polanski. Oh, I know. He did some things, but but that yeah. doesn't... I mean, Everyone else that, has too, so... Yeah. Not a good movie, you know I mean? I, I mean, I don't know what... You know, that's funny. What, what was that old question? It's like, um, you have a difficult mathematical question. Should you ask the PhD in mathematics or a hobo begging on the street corner? Which okay. one fast? I, su I suppose the right answer is probably the hobo, but then why not the, the PhD in mathematics? So, you, know. you, you could ask them both, but I guess, but I guess the real right answer is ask, ask the one that knows the correct <laughs> knows the correct answer. I mean, after all, we—I mean, we don't know. There's my—I read story like people that that have a master's degree and they've had horrible spells of misfortune, and they're, they're sitting there, they're homeless, and they they should be having and and just stuff stuff happens beyond our control, you know. Oh my God, look at what is going on in in Hawaii. Uh, when I checked the news an hour ago, nine. Yeah. Yeah, 93. They're looking at a lot more this too. afternoon. I'm uh, sure that was, there's friend, whenever his mother got there, oh. that's what she was talking about was Maui. You know, like wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean he's got our attention over here as well. Yeah. Well we God be with him. Uh, that's funny habit habits that stick with you. I was raised Catholic and I, I would I would tell them to their face like the, the not birth the birth control thing is nonsense. Uh their abortion policy uh is nonsense. Um, um not allowing women priests is just a pile of crap. You know, not that they're asking me. But it's funny how habits stick with you. You know, just uh, I say quick little prayers because it's just just in the habit of it. Whether whether it's going just out into space, you never know. But uh, all 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 images of God are graven images in the fact that. <laughs> We don't have the capacity to understand. Hell, for that matter, uh, a, a, a super advanced alien civilization, they might quite possibly have the ability to create universes. There's theories on that. In other words, 
they do. That's why the other the other day, and and I hope um, uh, if if you haven't read it, you're really missing a treat. It's a short story called "The Last Question" by Isaac Isaac Asimov, and uh, I've known everybody that reads it. They said, "Oh God, that should change my day," but it's a short, fun little story, and. That That's was a pretty good visionary. But then, when, we're talking when about I, civilizations yeah. that are capable of creating universes, but then you're talking about four through seven on the Kardashev scale. Yeah. Now, we have no way of even trying to pretend to yeah. understand something of that magnitude because we are on the, on the same Kardashev scale. We're at 0 0.73. Yeah. You know, I mean, you to, yeah, to try to comprehend you know, the civilizations there beyond. I mean, we can't even wrap our heads around what a, a type two civilization would be. You yeah. know, worries the hell out of me. Way back in the early 70s, the very first Star Trek novel came out, and it was called Spock Must Die. And it's yeah. excellent. Okay. I and remember that. In it, what happened? They duplicated at two spots. They try to beam him to a planet, and he gets bounced back. And when they re yeah. there's two spots. Yeah. Okay. And Doctor McCoy, what he's worrying about, he's the whole time he said, "Okay, he's saying the the transporter. In other words, it reads you into a." And then it recreates you where you're at. But he says the person that goes in dies. They cease to exist. The person that comes out on the other end, well, they feel fine because they have all the memories. But, he's, but he said every time you go in, you're actually killing yourself. And what comes out the other side is a copy. But the person that got beamed out is dead. And if you stop and think about it, you say, huh, that's an interesting question, you know? Well, right, but it's interesting because of a much more fundamental source than just if we were to dematerialize ourselves on a subatomic level. Actually, it is the same as, you know, the Battle of Ulysses. You know, is it the same ship if every plank in it is replaced? Well, as it were, you know, either way, we consider the question with regard to some sort of instantaneity. You know, it's like, okay, I do this, and five seconds later, I have an entirely reconstituted body. You know, is my other body dead? It's the same question that we can pose with regard to the replication of ourselves. You know, last year, we all had a different body. Yeah, I was going to say, um, so, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm 63. So how many cells do I have that are the same, same exact cells as when I was born? Well, I mean, no, no, you've replaced most of your cells yeah. within the last year. Almost all of them. But, you know, I didn't realize this, uh, that, um, when you are born, you're born with your eyes the size that they will always be. And that's why babies, they seem to have such big eyes mm -hmm. because they all grown up. Your eyes don't get bigger as you as you grow. Isn't that something? I, I didn't know that until recently. I just... Brother wanted... John, you had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm it's very sorry. I'm looking at this tiny iPhone. Go ahead. Naris, you had a question? Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, I just I just wanted to say there's also another story uh, by Arthur C. Clarke, who wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey. He wrote a short story called The Star. Really? And basically, it's it's about it set in the far, far future. And Astronomers have definitively identified uh, the star of Bethlehem, where it where it is at, 
and they send like a generation ship out to go there and and the astronauts are jesuit priests so they're going out to see the star that was essentially the creation of their religion of the christian of the christian religion oh, wow. and they discover that the reason that they could see it is because it went supernova and destroyed all these systems in its yeah. in its path oh my god and I'll, and I'll, they're coming to terms with <laughs> yeah they're coming to terms with okay so the destruction of all these worlds meant the creation of our religion for <laughs> centuries and centuries isn't that, isn't that's a reality check that i don't think anyone wants to have yeah. <laughs> But it's yeah. a really interesting well, short story. I think it's about eighteen pages long. I'm get. I will. I've got. Maybe Sean. Sean, what's it called? The Star. The Star. By okay. Arthur C. Clarke. Yeah. Okay. I got the author. But yep. The Star. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Yep. Yep. I I mean, like you know, what's funny? Um, not it's not funny. Um, it just so happens. This Gulf of Mexico, uh, some years back, when they were doing new highways, they hit a bunch of incredible fossils, and and they actually uh, had to stop, and they and they had paleontologists run down here to Beaumont to supervise and collect, and they got a lot of valuable stuff. Uh, as I understand it, what is my my, I found it personally, my, the Gulf of Mexico here is where that major comet or asteroid hit that caused the dinosaurs to die out. And yeah, you, you just think, in other words, if it wasn't for that mass extinction, we wouldn't be here. We sure wouldn't be like what we are. I mean, we'd be God knows what. I wouldn't look too good. Uh, well, but, yeah, we wouldn't be here at all. If you think yeah. that just the fact that any of us exist is a one in 400,000 million to one odds. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's think about all the conditions that had to come together since. Not too shabby. Right. Um, all the probabilities up until the fact that it just by chance, you know, that the big hairless apes that our parents were, you know, got together to make, you know, us into Bill R. Ape, right. Um, so, yeah, yeah just, just the odds of existing at all are something like 400,000 million to one. Well, what about if you, if you look at how fine-tuned the universe is, and if these if like something about carbon or something, the teeny tiniest thing would be off. We just wouldn't exist. And it's like, it's just so improbable. You know, it almost makes you, it almost makes you go into the many world theories, although that has some issues there, there too. Uh, oh, why? Well, You've read David Lewis, right? Uh, I I tend on the plurality, on the plurality many of worlds, the many worlds theory kind of solves yeah. a lot of problems. It's just um um well, you well, didn't say it was gospel, but it is something to think it's about. It's hard to wrap your head around, but of course a lot of you know a lot of things. Uh okay, just first of all, you know, yeah, yeah. But I mean it's like like I said, this isn't gospel, but at the same time, David Lewis, I think he's not with us anymore. But anyway, um, on the plurality of worlds, uh, I can't remember what year that was from, but uh, it's an interesting read. Um, yeah, yeah, who's that? Even. Who'd you say that was? Uh, David? David Lewis. Oh, David Lewis. 
That's Anyone else have any more questions for uh, Brother John while we got him here? Uh, we're coming up on the end of the hour. I had like one little comment about the two Spock to uh, Star Trek. And I, I read that like years and years ago. And yeah. what was really interesting is that now that we have all this information and uh, about quantum entanglement now. Yeah. So like, I always think like, are we ever going to get to like transporter technology? And is that going to become a reality to where, you know, actually we're not even composed of the same particles anymore? Uh, it's dangerous. About yeah. <laughs> Think, it's um, like development. They have, they have you know, they have succeeded I, in rematerializing. We're going to see uh, that. Yeah, in the Canaries. Anytime soon. But, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's to say that it's never going to be, uh, um, no, nah, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't say that. I think that. I think that we're going to improve. I think that what what I'm thinking is going to happen <clears throat> is we are eventually going to get so good at utilizing energy from the sun that, for all practical purposes, we just have unlimited. In other words, you you just you you need energy, you got it, and. And we had to do that for a hundred fucking years too. And, um, well, we gotta gotta keep trying. You know? I mean, we are getting better at it. I mean, no, it's like what we only need to do is get rid of the people who just want to slap a meter on it and charge us for it, because we've well, learned how to get. You remember? <laughs> you remember that that the big argument with Tesla and Edison was yes. Tesla wanted. To just have electricity in the air, and you just yeah. And he proved that it was the, there. Yeah. So, yeah. Right for that. We are really... all right because you know people like J.P. Morgan. You can oh god yeah you know, yeah if they couldn't stick a meter on it and charge us for so many kilowatt hours, well then it wasn't interesting. If it you know <laughs> electricity, I, I the tell same you. as what it does, you know. This is a, I can understand, but you know, I can understand distribution costs, but production this, costs are stupid. What we're doing, yeah. uh, in the United States, because I mean, I'm old enough to have to have been there, and like I remember when people didn't hate you because you were a Democrat or think you were an idiot because you were a Republican. It's like like in the house, they work together. You know, they say, well, we want, you know, we want to do this and this. And the Republicans would say, well, we think it'd be better this way. And the Democrats will be, and they would really come to compromise. I mean, sure, the majority party got probably got more of their way, but like the situation that we're, that we're in today is just, it's just, Unbelievable, and some of the some of the people that that we have in in Congress, oh my God, I'm not going to get in. I mean, I mean, you know who they are, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to name and and get into a thing. But what I mean is, it's very clear, you know that, uh, like I know on Facebook, I didn't block for messages, but I I just had to make invisible so many people because I just just didn't want to see their nonsense yeah. you know day after day after after so, day no, so I, bro, brother John so yeah. our time is coming to an end because we got another class coming but I have one oh, last I, question for you yeah do you as the founder as the as everything that's going on today do you still think we need Jedi Uh, yes, I've just in case we, uh, if we decide to change, we own Temple of the Force. But, um, you see, because we define, we're not trying to copy no Star Wars Jedi. 
I mean, in, in many ways. Because what our mission is, guardian of peace and justice, and if you think of this, every good thing flows from peace and justice. If you're not at peace, if you're, if you're, where am I going to get my next meal? How am I going to feed my children? Why am I in jail for something I didn't, I didn't do? That's bad shit. And um, so every good thing, happiness, satisfaction, uh, a good home life, everything flows from peace and justice. And so, yeah, I think we do need Jedi. And I think we need to remember that's what we are. And that covers a lot. That's everybody from a policeman to a lawyer that fights for you to the surgeon that saves your life to the farmer that grows your food. Everybody playing a different part. You don't have to have a black belt in karate and I mean, I really do know some people that say, well, you know, if you can't do all this kung fu, then you're just not shit. And I'll say, well, fine. The next time you're falsely accused of murder, we'll call you in a black belt. And and he uh -huh. goes, are, the, are, are you dying because you need your appendix out? Well, we'll just let him kung fu it out of you. You don't need a surgeon, do you? <laughs> That's why I say it's just so blatantly stupid. I mean, they... They can't help that they're stupid, you know. It just, but but it's, you know, it's not it's not I, their fault, right? It's pretty dumb to say that you're not a Jedi unless you have certain physical attributes. I mean, you can be a Jedi in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean a lot of Jedi wound up in wheelchairs. Yeah. <laughs> Lord be be with me though. But uh yeah. So, and yeah, for, uh, I'm d delighted uh, to to have PMs and and comments, questions, or or things you just want to say, you know, in, in private, any you know, way I can help, and all. And I got, um, I'll make a list of books I particularly like. Maybe I throw in some movies, movies too. I'm certainly uh, uh, very so wonderful to spend some time with y'all and. And I hope to do that more. I, I'm going to really try to be more active on on Discord and in some things. And I might give like I might start doing some um, some little some Zen discussions uh, if anybody's interest anybody's interested in it. And because uh, that's that's kind of sort of my center. That's uh, you know how I've survived mentally uh, a lot of you know bad things, and uh, and I hope uh, that I can uh, share that. that uh, you know, for what it's worth and for what it can do. Thank you so much, brother John. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. We got another class coming up. Brother He's John said funny. you can call him. What's you know where to meet about? him. <laughs> What's the next one about? Uh, the next one is with Deej, I believe. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, so, we'll see you. <laughs> Thank you very much. May the force be with you, Brother John. Also with you. Bye bye. Boop. So, what do we do now? We leave this one and go to this one to get the address for the next one, right? Zap this. Yeah. So we'll leave this one and go to the next one. Okay. Yeah. The link is.